Friedrich Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra is one of the most influential and enigmatic philosophical works of the 19th century. First published between 1883 and 1885, this text presents Nietzsche's ideas in the form of a fictional narrative centered on the prophet Zarathustra. It explores themes such as the will to power, the death of God, and the concept of the Ubermensch or Overman. Through Zarathustra, Nietzsche delivers a profound critique of traditional morality, religion, and the cultural values of Western civilization. Zarathustra as a symbol. Nietzsche's choice of Zarathustra as the central figure is symbolic. Historically, Zarathustra, or Zoroaster, was the founder of Zoroastrianism, an ancient Persian religion that influenced Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Nietzsche revives this figure to deliver his radical message. Zarathustra is portrayed as the prophet who first introduced the dualistic notion of good and evil, a concept Nietzsche wants to dismantle. By having Zarathustra proclaim the death of God, Nietzsche is symbolically rejecting the foundations of Judeo-Christian morality. Zarathustra's mission is to guide humanity towards the overman, who transcends conventional moral categories. The Death of God One of the most famous ideas and thus spoke Zarathustra is the proclamation that God is dead. Nietzsche uses this dramatic metaphor to express the decline of religious belief and the erosion of traditional values in modern society. This is not merely an atheistic statement, it is Nietzsche's observation of a cultural shift where the guiding force of religion has lost its power to give meaning to human life. With the death of God, Nietzsche sees an existential crisis arising in which humanity must find new values and a new way of living without the metaphysical crutch of religion, the Ubermensch. At the heart of thus spoke Zarathustra is Nietzsche's idea of the Ubermensch, often translated as the Overman or Superman. The Overman is Nietzsche's vision of an individual who has overcome the limitations of humanity and transcended traditional moral values. Rather than submitting to religious or societal norms, the Overman creates his own values and lives according to his will to power. The concept is introduced in the first part of the book, where Zarathustra proclaims that man is something that shall be overcome. Nietzsche views the Overman as the next evolutionary step for humanity, one that fully embraces life and the world without the need for divine or moral absolutes. The Eternal Recurrence Another key concept in Thus Spoke Zarathustra is the eternal recurrence. This idea proposes that all events in life will repeat infinitely in exactly the same way. Nietzsche presents this thought experiment as a test of one's attitude toward life. Those who embrace life fully, without regret or resentment, will be able to affirm the eternal recurrence. This is part of Nietzsche's larger project of encouraging a yes-saying attitude toward life, in which one accepts the world as it is, including all of its suffering and imperfections, rather than wishing for a transcendent realm or a different existence. Critique of Morality Nietzsche's critique of traditional morality is a central theme in Thus Spoke Zarathustra. He opposes what he calls slave morality, which he associates with Christianity and other systems of thought that prioritize humility, weakness, and the denial of life's pleasures. Nietzsche contrasts this with master morality, which values strength, power, and life affirmation. Zarathustra advocates for the creation of new values that reject the old moral systems and celebrate the will to power, creativity, and the full embrace of life. The Role of Suffering Nietzsche's philosophy is deeply concerned with the role of suffering in human life. In Thus Spoke Zarathustra, suffering is not something to be avoided or condemned, rather, it is an essential part of existence that should be embraced. Nietzsche argues that suffering leads to personal growth and transformation, as it pushes individuals to confront their limitations and transcend them. The Overman, in Nietzsche's view, is someone who has undergone intense suffering and emerged stronger, having created new values and meaning from the experience. Zarathustra's Solitude A recurring motif in the text is Zarathustra's isolation. He spends much of the narrative in solitude, returning to society only to deliver his teachings before retreating again. This reflects Nietzsche's belief that the philosopher or the creator of new values must often stand apart from society, as the masses are not yet ready to accept the truths that the philosopher brings. Zarathustra's solitude is both a physical and intellectual separation, symbolizing the loneliness of those who seek to rise above conventional morality and mediocrity. The Overcoming of Pity One of the significant challenges Zarathustra faces in the text is overcoming his own pity for others. Nietzsche views pity as a negative emotion that undermines the will to power. Instead of helping others through pity, 
Nietzsche advocates for a form of compassion that empowers individuals to overcome their weaknesses and take responsibility for their own lives. Zarathustra must learn to let go of pity, recognizing that each person must find their path to the overman on their own. This is part of Nietzsche's broader rejection of altruistic and self-sacrificial values, which he sees as detrimental to individual strength and growth. The Role of Art and Aesthetics Nietzsche had a deep appreciation for art, and in thus spoke Zarathustra, he emphasizes the importance of aesthetics in the creation of new values. For Nietzsche, art is one of the highest expressions of the will to power. It allows individuals to impose their vision on the world, shaping reality according to their desires. In the text, Zarathustra often speaks of the need for poets and creators to bring forth new values and new ways of being. This aesthetic dimension is essential to Nietzsche's philosophy, as he sees the creation of beauty and meaning as a response to the death of God and the collapse of traditional values. Zarathustra's Disciples Throughout the narrative, Zarathustra encounters various disciples and followers who are drawn to his teachings but often misunderstand or misapply them. These characters represent different types of people who are struggling to grasp the radical implications of Nietzsche's philosophy. Zarathustra is frequently frustrated by his disciples, as they tend to revert to old patterns of thinking or fail to fully embrace the will to power. Nietzsche uses these interactions to illustrate the difficulty of communicating profound truths to those who are not yet ready to hear them. Thus spoke Zarathustra is a complex and multifaceted work that continues to influence philosophy, literature, and cultural criticism. Nietzsche's bold ideas about the death of God, the Ubermensch, the eternal recurrence, and the critique of morality challenge readers to rethink their assumptions about life, meaning, and values. At the same time, the narrative's poetic and symbolic style invites multiple interpretations, ensuring its place as a rich and enduring text in the history of ideas. Through the figure of Zarathustra, Nietzsche presents a vision of humanity's potential to overcome its limitations and create a new future, one that is free from the constraints of traditional morality and religion.